All right, so our next guest, he is a very hilarious comedian impressionist. And I know he's going big places because he recently got an internship at The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. Woo! So congrats to him on that. And you're in for a real treat. So please give a very loud, warm applause for my friend, Matthew Friend. here this evening. Uh, but I want to start with my favorite impression. It's Barack Obama. Not many people know this. There are three distinct modes to Barack Obama. There's Barack Obama when he's making a speech. There's Barack Obama when he's with children. And there's Barack Obama when he's with his friends, the boys, Joe Biden, honoring an NBA team, for example. And he sounds very different each time. Notice the different, different intonations in each voice. Barack Obama making a speech. Barack, come on. Tonight, more than 200 years after a former colony won the right to determine its own destiny, the task of perfecting our union moves forward. It moves forward because of you. I'm not going to do the whole speech. Barack Obama making, uh, uh, with children, uh, Barack Obama with children is very different. His voice gets higher, he'll bend down, be friendlier, he'll go, how are you? It is good to see you. What's your name? What are you dressed as for Halloween? That is adorable. That is so cute. I you know was a fairy for Halloween too. Come on now. That is good. And then there's Barack Obama when he's with the boys, with his friends. Let's say he's not even in the 18, but like a dad joke. We'll go, nah, LeBron James is here. <laughs> He is the second best player to wear the number 23. <laughs> I'm a Bulls fan, by the way, so for those of you that didn't uh, catch the reference. Okay, that was the Obama's for you, everybody. Uh, I'm sure there's more names to him, I just haven't figured it out. Uh, Trump, I know, terrible. Uh, so there's a lot of different impressions of Donald Trump out there. It's actually overwhelming. But three of the most popular famous impressions all sound very different and have their own unique style. Alec Baldwin's impression is very different from Jimmy Fallon's impression, which is very different from Stephen Colbert's impression of Donald Trump. Let me show you what I mean. This is Alec Baldwin's impression of Donald Trump on Saturday Night Live. And why are you allowed? Alec, come on up. <laughs> Here we go. Let me get it, sir. So, first of all, 
of all, it's so great to be here. My name is Armie Hammer. It's just so much fun to be here at Views from NYU. Just a great, great platform for performing. I'm here with Timothy. Timothy, so what was it like to work with me? I'm going to set up Call Me By Your Name. You know, well, Armie, like, you're just like such a special guy. <laughs> it's like, working with you, like, you're, you're such a special guy. And, like, I, I know you're just like a role model. And, like, <laughs> Timothy, that wasn't my question. I'd like you to be more specific. What is it like to work with me on Call Me By Your Name? Well, like, you're just such a special guy. And, like, <laughs> Timothy, look, I need to get serious here. Do you go to Gallatin or not? People are confused. <laughs> Timothy, Timothy, what is your status as a student? We don't know. You know, I sort of do, I sort of don't. Okay, that's not specific. <laughs> that was Timothy Chalamet and Ernie Hammer. We were on the street recently, and there was a British couple. Really, really British. Like, they were straight out of Downton Abbey, okay? And the guy was really polite uh, to his wife, presuming it was his wife. He turns to the woman, and he says, Excuse me, I've got a sneeze. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I don't really excuse myself before I sneeze, which I probably should, but then he turns to his wife and he goes, i got a sneeze, one second. A I mean, seriously, you, you, you just catapulted to success. Well, Howard, it's not that hard. You know, I was a writer on SNL, and I be, just came a long way, okay? So what's your favorite one-liner joke then, okay, John? Well, I sneezed near an atheist once, and he simply said, screw you, <laughs> That's funny, because um, uh, an atheist wouldn't bless you, so that's... Good joke. Uh, so I was a very sheltered child growing up, a very sheltered kid. I don't know if you can tell by just looking at me, but I was. Um, and I had severe food allergies, you know, wheat, rye, oats, and barley. These are four big grains. They cover a lot of different foods. And part of growing up with these allergies was having a very overprotective mother sitting right there. How you doing? Even this far away from you right now? That's weird. Uh, so uh, I had a very overprotective mother. And she would lie to me to make me feel better about the things that I couldn't eat because I was like that guy in your grade that like brings the containers to the birthday and it's really weird. You're like, oh, okay, can I put my food free snacks over here, you know? Uh, and I was that guy. And she would make me feel better about the things that I couldn't eat by lying to me, by tell to tell me that the things I couldn't eat were really gross and the things I didn't like. So to this day, I still think that Oreos have cheese in them. Uh, yeah, that's not going over well. Uh, so yeah, I'm definitely more Oreos have cheese in them, but there's not many people know this, but there's discrimination that occurs within the food allergy community. Peanut kids have it the absolute best, okay? <laughs> you don't understand. There are signs in every single classroom that say, Can't have nuts. Can't have nuts here, okay? <laughs> don't even think about opening your Reese's, because you can't have nuts. <laughs> but here's the thing about that, okay? <laughs> Nuts. Because there were no signs when I was younger that said, you can't have focaccia bread in the classroom. Okay? <laughs> you can't have focaccia bread in the classroom. <laughs> what happens if you're gluten-free and in prison? Okay? I'm with my cellmate, Killer Bob or whatever, and Bob is scary, and I say to him, Bob, you gotta help me out here. I mean, like, I can't eat anything. I mean, I'll trade you my pack of cigarettes and my, my Playboy magazine for some K2s. What's a K2? It's a gluten-free Oreo! Bet you didn't know that! <laughs> you gotta learn something! Very obscure brand names, aren't they? Uh, before I do some more material, I'd like to do this right now. I'm gonna bring out the host, Brandon. Brandon Lou. Brandon, come on out here, man. <laughs> so what I'm 
going to do right now, credit to Jimmy Fallon did this on America's Got Talent. He wasn't a contestant, he just did it, and I'm copying him. Uh, it's going to be speed impression, so like every five or so seconds, I'm going to do a new impression. Right. And I'm sorry that I couldn't memorize this, it's really like insane. Before I do this, like I'll be alone, like in my room, like in, in, the, in the bathroom, and I'll say, Michelle, where'd you put the toothpaste? <laughs> Michelle's not there, and I don't know why I'm talking to myself. <laughs> Let's right. do this. So every five seconds, new impression. Okay, ready? Let's commence. Set. Yeah. Paul Giamatti. Oh, yeah! Hello! Oh, oh. Okay, you might have seen me when I played John Adams. Great! Nice. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Pete Davidson, do like a sick dude, like this performance. It's like even sicker than when I did Iron Man Grande. Next, okay, fine. Mila Ventimiglia, this is us. All right, Randall, how you doing, buddy? Next. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God, this is so much pressure. Okay, uh, uh, Will Arnett. All right, so basically. <laughs> This is even better than a banana stand, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ted Cruz, you know, I have a set, I just beat lying liberal Beto O'Rourke for the state of Texas. Yes. We are main rat. Well, I'm Beto O'Rourke, can I just have to say one quick thing? Uh, I'm going to run for president in 2020, this is a new impression, and I'm sorry if it's not going to okay. uh, Ronald Reagan? Well, <laughs> Mr. Gorbachev, dear <laughs> Why is this on here? Andy Puttigam from the Yacht Headspace. Hi, my name's Andy. Welcome to Headspace on the Christoph Waltz, he's a firm fundamental understanding that in every single minute I do, I'm going to finish up my teeth. So, next. John Oliver, are you serious? Donald Trump, this man is a psychopath. Henry Golding and Crazy Rich Agents. Right. Good to wait. Simple. I'm the best man. I think it's time I showed my family and my mama who my beautiful girlfriend is. Nice. <laughs> Johnny I, Apple, you know, it's incredible the way in which we design our products with a brilliant user interface. <laughs> Shakira. Simon <laughs> Amina. Bernie Sanders, look, we all need to know one quick thing. Look, sure, okay? We are in the top ten of one yes. percent. Of <laughs> Roger Federer, you guys won't know this, but whatever. You know it's really crazy here just to be uh, playing tennis again. I feel really great at this age. Yeah. Yeah, okay, fantastic. It's great. Uh, Scotty McCreary, why don't I just do the transition in Roger Federer's voice? That was weird. Scotty McCreary, they were like, mm, don't worry, turn. Okay. Uh, Stefan, oh my god. Use from NYU has everything. <laughs> so cool. Uh, Tim Gunn, make it work, ladies. I mean, you really do look fabulous, sir. Okay? Okay, I have to say, I love the brown shoes, but maybe I'm going to get a different color next time, okay? <laughs> Frank Underwood, now listen, I know that this is a bit of a taboo impression because, well, we all know what happened. <laughs> but the reality is that if you didn't want me to do it, well, then I'm sorry about it, okay? <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried, what kind of a show is this? I'm confused. The young people don't know who this man is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a minute here, I'm sorry. Well, you know, I'll, I'll do this one last. Right. Uh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart, hello everybody. Patrick Stewart, this is kind of verbal diarrhea that I'm committing on stage. Right uh, next, British Siri. Okay, press one for more. <laughs> Got some sweat in my eye, not gonna lie. It's very hot up here, guys. Bradley Cooper in A Star Is Born. Can't with me to Memphis, please. All right. Thanks. Looking really beautiful out there. <laughs> Johnny Carson, just because my grandparents are here, I don't bother. You know, this here is a wonderful show. I'm not sure what's called it. This city or my ex wife? <laughs> 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 it's like, oh, okay. Well, you know, you might know me from my film, Click. Great, great movie. Nice. Schreiber. So I recently hosted Saturday Night Live. My eyebrow is really high up on my face. <laughs> so I like it. Okay. Uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Warburton. Hey, Peter. I'm just very strong. Big Mouth fans here. Yeah. I knew this would be the right crowd to do that, by the way. Okay. Uh, this is a Big Mouth family guy and American Dad. We're gonna have a good time up here right now. All right, dude, it's Coach Steve. What can I do? <laughs> All right, everybody, where's Andrew? I don't know. I'm confused, okay? Things are changing in my body. Oh my god, Andrew, you're <laughs> Thor, 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 Thor. <laughs> Was that baby over there? Maybe me? Stewie Griffin? It's a crossover episode. You see what I'm doing? <laughs> Who brought the alien, Brad? 
Roger from American Dad, that son of a bitch. Okay, thank you. Where are my chocolate dials? Where are my chocolate dials? Okay, uh, that was that for the impressions. And everybody, thank you so much. I'm Matthew Friend. Hope you guys